Hello and welcome RC Shim in the hangar and today I want to reveal this gimbal for you it's the Fiotech Vlog Pocket and my review is inspired by Ali Shan Mao check out his channel also doing this review with another gimbal so this got me started but it's not where I ended <laughs> I found this on Gearbest, thanks Gearbest for sponsoring this episode and the standout feature of this device here is its portability and until this I rarely or I seldom used the DJI Osmo Mobile in the first generation at the moment they have the third generation which is smaller and more compatible and foldable as this one but the thing is, with a gimbal, you want it to be as small as possible, so you always take it with you. Kinda is the same as with DSLR cameras versus your mobile phone. You rather film or take pictures with your mobile phone because you can always have it with you. Let's just take a closer look at this Firetech gimbal. The first thing. I mean, I, I started it up here, but the, the app, the Firetech app is really crappy and even their auto tracking doesn't work and stuff like this. But the cool thing is you have a Bluetooth connection to, to the gimbal, to the shutter and to the controls. And you can easily just use the normal camera app. The thing with uh, the GH5 I'm shooting on is I also have it placed on a gimbal. In this case the Ronin SC. A smartphone which is auto tracking me and it's partly scary but also very cool. So this can be a very expensive and automated tripod for you. But of course it also can be a very cool handheld gimbal. But today's video is not about this gimbal, but rather about this here. Let's talk about the Firetech Vlog Pocket some more. I will show you how it folds. Okay, that's it. It's really easy. Unscrew here, unfold, tighten it again, unlock the axes. Make sure this right thing is on top. Bear with me. Just clamp in the phone and make sure it's stable. There you go. I have a ton of footage shot on this gimbal and that speaks for this gimbal. Because it's so small and versatile I always have it in my backpack. Let's jump into some sample footage now. I'm using the vlog pocket here to selfie phone myself like an idiot. If that's something you're into, you're welcome. I disabled stabilization on the phone. The Samsung Galaxy S10 is the phone in this case here. Stabilization is quite good. And show you what the normal phone stabilization would look like. So this is the phone handheld with stabilization turned on on the phone and if you walk you see it it really shakes a bit I can even disable the stabilization on the phone and you immediately see I have a larger field of view again but the shakiness is really it's not something that you want to use in 2019 so now that we know why we use it Let's continue to use it. Audio is normally not that good, but today it's not windy, so it's not an issue. Currently I'm using and I prefer to use the phones app. You can use different lenses there, which you cannot in the Firetech app. The ergonomics are not ideal. I have the extension tripod thingy down there. So it's a bit bigger grip, but for people with large hands this is not ideal and it's just a cylinder no 
not the real grip style and it has this button there charging port button this is start stop recording this is double click for selfie mode if you need this double press the trigger to center the gimbal single press this button to have it locked I have wrote down all the differences between these two competitors the DJI Osmo Mobile 3 and the Lock Bucket this one is lighter it's 250 gram I'll just check the specs to be certain I already want to change my hand really <laughs> And show you what walking in the park can look like with such a gimbal. The pan axis is not that smooth. So if you turn your hand a bit, it looks a bit unnatural. And it's, it's hard to make like smooth turns with it. If you don't want to turn at all, you can lock the axis, of course. So it stays. But for these smooth movements, uh, it needs a bit of practice. <laughs> what those kids do to our church, I mean our church is ugliest, you know what, already, but it's ugly graffiti. Hold on, there is Squawkness again. There I lock it. Now I go past some trees. Ah. But what I kind of hate about this gimbal is the limitations on the tilt. So I can only tilt like 30 degrees until I run into the limits, you see? This is the lower side of tilt. And this is the upper. Okay, so that's a dual angle setup. <laughs> Do I look like a complete idiot? Maybe. I just want to show you how I look with the gimbal. And the, the upside is it's not too large and it doesn't, doesn't disturb people that much. So let's try to make a smooth and a tilt motion down. Yeah, it's okay. -ish. If you really smooth, if you really move it smooth, it's okay. But the side movement, you have to be smooth and slow here as well. Yeah, while I'm here. I will switch lenses. So this is now something you can't do with the built-in app. No, I don't move at all. You see the gimbal movement, which is deviation, which shouldn't happen. So I had this, um, now I'm in lock mode by the way, so it should stay, but it drifts. So gimbal drift Looks like it is an issue on this gimbal a bit. I mean, it's not terrible, but it can ruin your shot if you want to have it smooth and steady. And the uh, wide angle lens just looks sick to me. I mean, obviously we have some gimbal in the shot in the wide angle lens here. The wide angle shot through the trees really looks awesome. So I want to show you one more test. I will be walking the same pass twice. First without the phone's stabilization, like now. Do we see any serious micro chatter, micro vibrations? Or is it just fine this way? This way we don't waste uh, lens space or we don't zoom in with the phone. So let's just go until here. Now this is the second time I'm moving this pass with the phone's stabilization turned on. Additionally, this 
this now ultra smooth? Is this better? We will see in a side by side shot for sure. On the phone screen, I couldn't judge it. I would turn off the phone stabilization just to have more wide angle so I don't have to move my arm. Once again, the stair shot. As you know, walking downstairs is not a smooth operation. It lets you see if the gimbal really works well or not. That's how small it is. You can like really fit it in your pocket. Still the 25mm lens is the best lens on the S10. Trying to move sideways. Okay, we are at the wide angle now and I try to zoom in. What times? Okay, I zoomed in five times digitally. And if you have a slight movement on the set axis, it will turn. It turns naturally, but it turns. Might be a nice option for you, of course. Digital zoom sucks, but better than missing a shot. How does this look like? That's a nice angle. So what this really does, it makes me want to have a GH5 on a Ronin S or something like this. Get insane shots. But of course that's nice to start with. This might be the least favorite thing to do. <laughs> Gotta work. Peter officially thinks I'm an idiot, I'm an idiot now.
Só tá tentando, hein? Só tá tentando. There are also a few downsides that I found not too many reviewers mentioned. And the biggest downside of this thing here, I mean, if you look from the side, it's quite flat. And this is because it was supposed to be foldable and ultra portable. With this, they have this design decision of, you see this tilted motor here, this one. I mean, normally a three axis gimbal should stabilize on three axes. You have the pan axis, this one here, then you have the roll axis, this here, and the tilt axis, it should be 90 degree from the roll axis, let's say 30 degree or something like this. They can figure it out with mathematics, uh, how to move both motors to give tilt and pan and roll. But there are physical limitations. I mean, if you hold it like this, like pouring wine, then it works. But if you want to move forward, you get into the limitations of the gimbal. And also upwards is not too much of play. So the most impressive shot for me on gimbals is always the camera crane style. And you can do this with that. Even if you extend this with a long selfie stick thingy, you cannot like move it up this way and have a cool reveal shot because yeah this axis is skewed. So you can do it maybe sideways but also sideways you have the limitation like right now this motor is in the cam's view and you can move it up yeah. So with a lot of practice you can get quite good movements, but you're limited. Osmo Mobile One. Here you have the classic design with the axes like they are supposed to be. And this way you can have this lamplight mode, which is quite, quite common. Flashlight mode. And you can also do reveal shot. But the dumbest thing about this old gimbal is it does, it has the battery door back, uh, down there and it doesn't have a tripod mount so you cannot just extend it here you were supposed to extend it here with an angle and uh, it's just it's not good or you can use this plastic base which has a tripod mount but then it's wobbly so that was a bit of a downside here and also as I said it's quite quite big and clumsy and you don't want to pack it too often What's going on in my studio now? I have natural sunlight joining the studio lights, which is <laughs> nice. <laughs> Do I recommend it to you? Kinda, definitely. It's cheap. With uh, with the rebate code, you can get it for like seventy dollars or seventy euros. Check it out in the links in the description. The runtime is quite good, so you charge it directly over USB micro here. The usability, as I said, is quite good. If you press down the trigger, it follows your movement fast. And if you let go of the trigger, it follows it slower. If you press this here so that you get a solid light, then the axis is totally locked and the phone always looks in the same direction. Uh, the competition, of course, is DJI's Osmo Mobile 3, which is also foldable. It has better ergonomics on the grip. And of course the software there is better. The active track, the DJI uh, software is really good. This thing's app is kind of crap. But on the other hand, on the DJI gimbal, you cannot use your own phone, your phone's app, and still uh, be able to uh, control start and stop recording with a Bluetooth. It's limited to their app, so that's a 
bonus for this thing here. You have a loosening screw here. The axis lock into place like this. And it's folded and you can secure it here. So and there's this little tripod. And that's really small enough in this little sack to supply you. 340 gram with the little tripod and with the sack here. So now it really just comes down to how good is the stabilization in your phone. I've seen videos and reviews of the new iPhone 11 and I think on an iPhone 11 with that kind of stabilization these things are kind of useless. On my Galaxy S10 I saw the benefits, especially if you're walking or running, of course, then you get a better stabilization than with just the phone stabilization. All the phones definitely benefit from this. I really like the versatility of this little gimbal. If you want to do more cinematic stuff, of course, you film with your DSLR and then you get a Ronin S or Ronin SC maybe. I hope you liked this review. Tell me in the comments how you liked my setup. It's a bit of a test. Sorry, it's not very professional to do it this way, but I just wanted to play around with my tech stuff. Maybe I will do a follow-up review from the DJI Ronin SC. What do you guys think? I mean, I saw and before I bought it, of course, I watched a lot of reviews. There are very good reviews from KaiW, from iFondo. Okay, so that's it really now. Thanks for watching. Bye.